stay with the Holy Ghost and continue with him even when it doesn't make sense and he will plunge you into the wilderness everything at some point everything won't work when you notice you have arrived at that place you are close to a breakthrough spiritual Satan Satan will be allowed to bend your mind and to make you feel that you are worthless you are useless when you see that symptom the light is about to shine I tell you this as a man that has been in the tunnel for more than two decades. I knew that I had gifting from God that can touch the world. I knew it. I knew that what I had received from God was massive. The breakthrough I expected lingered. I, I programmed it for seven years, that in seven years, the Lord will cause my face to shine. And instead of my face shining in seven years, the greatest problem of my life came. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 19. The burden of Egypt. Behold, the Lord rideth upon a swift cloud, and shall come into Egypt, and the idols of Egypt shall be moved at his presence, and the heart of Egypt shall melt in the midst of it. And I will set the Egyptian against the Egyptians, and they shall fight every one against his brother, and every one against his neighbor city against city kingdom against kingdom and the spirit of Egypt shall fail in the midst thereof hallelujah there was a visitation that the prophet prophesied about a visitation that will invade the nation of Egypt this visitation is ordained by God to strike at the very heart of the infrastructure of the land and at the end of that visitation the Bible says that the spirit of Egypt shall fail there are two things that we expect when God decides to occasion this kind of uh, visitation first of all the Bible says that the heart of Egypt shall melt in the midst of it the heart of Egypt the confidence uh, that is the reason for which the Egyptians do what they do. That heart will melt. And then secondly in verse 3 the Bible says that the spirit of Egypt shall fail. We want to pray for Nigeria. And just like God visited Egypt, if you read properly from verse 1, you will find out that the first recipients of the impact of God's visitation were the idols. I'm wondering what kind of visitation this is. He said the idols will shake. The idols were the first receptacles that received the impact of the presence of God. No doubt Nigeria is bedeviled by spiritual things, by spiritual priesthood, by spiritual intercessors. What has brought us to this state can only be spiritual, can only be demonic. If you check our wealth profile, we number in terms of potential among the richest nations of the world. It was not designed by God, the Creator, for any Nigerian to be under the yoke of poverty. But our experience is a contradiction. It's as if there is a manipulation of our possibility, the handiwork of witchcraft. We want to ask that God will visit Egypt. Hallelujah. Egypt is the metaphor for Nigeria for tonight. Visit Nigeria. Let the idols of the land that give empowerment to the system that have subjugated us feel the heat of your touch and let the heart of Egypt melt and let the spirit of Egypt fail. Brethren, it is time to cry to the Lord concerning our nation. That we may lift up our voices and secure the help of God. Concerning Nigeria. Never be tired to pray for Nigeria. This is the land that the Lord has given unto us. Spirit of Egypt fail. 
Ibros kovetami si kaprendo komba mila eskabria fata masketo kapele. Moskiso se preskofita makoti la baharadali. Shenin kompela skufris kapata kunda mahis kobrela. Maita kambela sule maskila. Je compre ce qui faut tomber à capetami, brasico patekanda babori à simo compeleto. Set us free, O God. Kabi boseke branta babola kambazi. Je donde escopre kapatuna kapesa menahala. Let the idols be discomfited. Let the heart of Egypt melt in the mist. Let the spirit of Egypt fail. Yakopena is kopre la mahan telia. Abasosi la na kopre sheni kopatua la makapela ata. Is kopre sovena di amanteli kobe. And arise, arise, son of God, and let your enemies be scattered. And arise, arise, holy one, let your name. Be praised. Arise, arise, son of God, and let your enemies be scattered. Arise, arise, holy one. And let your name be praised. Oh my God! Arise, arise, son of God, and let your enemies be scattered. Arise. Arise, holy one, and let your day be praised. One more time, arise, 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 son of God, and let your enemy. This cataract, oh, arise, arise, holy one, and let your name be praised. Can you sing that song to the Lord tonight? Arise, arise, son of God. Let your enemies be scattered, and let your enemies be scattered. Oh, arise, arise, holy one, and let your name be praised. One more time, arise now. Arise, arise, son of God. Let your enemies be scattered, and let your enemies be scattered. Oh, arise, arise, holy one. Let 
that your word of peace will start in the place of intercession we ask for an intervention on the narrative that is playing out in our nation Nigeria a land a land that you bettered a land that you established to be a people through whom you will fill the gap of missionary manpower we are trodden down cast down we are in despair as a land and we ask that you come to our aid. Stretch forth your scepter. Stretch forth your scepter over this nation. Stretch forth your scepter over this nation. In the name of Jesus. Thank you.
thank you father in jesus mighty name we pray amen you may be seated hallelujah we will never get tired of praying for nigeria that the hand of the lord might be made manifest that this counsel might come to pass in the name of jesus all right we were talking about demons yesterday and we could not cover much ground but we were able to establish that in the demonic ranks there is the possibility of partnership there is a possibility of partnership and that is what gives rise to what we call the demonic gang demons can work in eye association the bible says that when an unclean spirit is casted out of a man he goes about in dry places seeking rest and find it none and he goes back to his last accommodation seeing that it is well swept and preserved then he reaches out to seven other demons that are more wicked than itself to come preserve the territory and so there's some form of partnership in the demonic ranks and when the local witchcraft of your community the witchcraft association the witchcraft coven meanwhile the word coven actually means court the witchcraft court where reports and complaints are brought so that the justice according to witchcraft can be executed uh, when the local witchcraft association becomes irrelevant about your case there is a possibility that an alliance can be struck to bring in another priesthood to help manage their dominion and there is partnership in the world of demons demons can partner demons of different kinds can partner it's also needful for us to understand that in the demonic realm ranking is not a function of size you might find a demon that is uh, six feet tall and that demon might not be highly placed in terms of rank what determines demonic rank is the propensity for wickedness the bible says that that demon will seek out seven other demons more wicked than itself so ranking in a demonic world is commensurate to capacity propensity of wickedness hallelujah hallelujah now i i say this because i feel it so strong in my spirit the lord has punctuated me now and he has dropped something upon my spirit all right i tried to run away from it but i think it's the will of god for me to say it. mom there is a woman that has troubled you and from what i see in, in the visions that god brought before my face is that this season for swift judgment to come upon that woman is now Amen. so that's just a parable uh, it's not part of the lecture it's a parable hallelujah listen to me demons demons are classified demons are identified demons are ranked based on their propensity for wickedness now you find some people that are altogether wicked and if you travel for two years and come back they have become more wicked it is because of their fellowship with demons when people begin to fellowship just like when you start fellowshipping with the holy ghost you start becoming like the holy ghost and when these people fellowship with demons they start becoming like demons and when they come into your space the only thing they see are opportunities that your environment lends them to perform wickedness and if you are not educated in such things you might you might think that everybody is the same but uh, unfortunately that is not the case are you still with me i say are you with me all right so in continuing our lecture i would like to bring to our notice that demons are persons they are persons without bodies hallelujah they are what persons without bodies they are persons they have intelligence they can 
understand things, they can learn things, they can speak. But unfortunately, they have been bereaved of their bodies. And because they are bereaved of their bodies, there is one thing that they need to do in order for them to be really relevant in the natural space, and that is to possess a being that has a body. Are you still with me? So demons are what? Are persons without bodies. They can think through human thoughts. They can speak through the vocal cords of human beings that they have access to and they possess. If you are going to deal with this kind of entity, it is needful for you to receive a special kind of training. Meanwhile, Jesus said, it's the lot and portion of every believer in the Bible, every believer in Jesus, to know how to expel devils, expel demons. Bro, you with black shirt, have you ever cast out devils from someone that is possessed before? You have. Hallelujah. Okay, let's look for a sister. You sister with black shirt there, yeah, with spectacles. Have you ever expelled demons, you see? You see, Jesus' ordinary level of identification of the believer is locked on his ability to expel devils. It's not for pastors and preachers, it's for those that believe in Jesus. And the reason why we're doing the teaching we're doing is to develop that competence for us to measure up to the basic, ordinary level expectation for the believer. Because we are falling short of that expectation for the last 35 years of discipleship. Instead of us to teach about the gospel, teach about the kingdom, we now teach about positive thinking, we now teach about um, strategic thinking. And because of our commitment to strategic thinking and motivational messages, we have downplayed the, the place of the prayer room. Meanwhile, in establishing basic apostolic culture, as is revealed in the book of Acts of the Apostles, you will find out that the heaviest molecule of their civilization and their community was a prayer culture. And even if you're a little lad like my son, where's my son? He has escaped. He's very mobile. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you are a little lad like my son, because the atmosphere is an environment of prayer, he doesn't have a choice. His options are not many. He will need to learn the ways of prayer. You know, prayer is not something that the flesh likes. But I have authority over him, so I bring him to prayer for prayer meetings. I heard him speaking in tongues at some point. Hallelujah. I mean, real tongues, not... He wasn't acting. You see, because the, that's how the environment is. And for those of you that got born again, and when you got born again, the, uh, uh, the believer platform that you were integrated into, if prayer wasn't a, a strong part of the culture of that house, you will become like the fellowship that you first encountered when you gave your life to Christ. You know, when Paul gave his life to Christ, he encountered Jesus on the way to Damascus. He, he did not choose the fellowship to attend. But when he got to Damascus, uh, he was co-opted into a community. And he was blind at the time, so it was not by choice. Hallelujah. And then when Jesus was giving instruction to Ananias... That was being empowered to go minister to, to Saul. The Bible says that uh, God told Ananias that when you get there, you will find this Saul. This, and he will be praying. The reason why the first thing that Paul picked was because the fellowship that he was integrated into was a praying fellowship. And so that was a culture of the house. Everybody seems to take on the shape of the house, the culture of the house. If it's the landscape of fornicators, fornication will begin to reign supreme. If it's a landscape of prayer people, you cannot but pray. Oh, we know things to do to gather crowd, but the apostolic model was not a crowd-oriented system. It was a kingdom-oriented system to build people to become functionaries in the kingdom of God. And if we do not uh, spell out our priorities in ministry early enough, we might find ourselves shadow boxing, looking for what is not lost. And at the end of the day, the great master might say, I don't seem to recognize it. But you know, that's a tragedy. The preacher is not a politician. He's not trying to blend so that he'll be accepted. He's not selling himself so that he can be on every platform. It's, a ministry is born by conviction. And conviction... It's like the light of your gas cooker. 
the light, your gas cooker, when you switch it on and you strike a match, because there's gas there, it will trap, it will catch, it will begin to burn. Hallelujah. So if you stay long with God, God will give you some convictions. Convictions are designed to shape your life, to shape your focus, to shape your emphasis, and to shape your doctrine. And when you see someone preaching, you will be able to pick his convictions through his utterances. Hallelujah. We must restore the gospel. The age of motivational preaching has made us mental people, not spiritual people. When you are talking to a man and addressing a man, when you hear his response, you know it's coming from the soul. He has not reached into the, very, the depths of spiritual treasure, which through joy we were supposed to access and draw water from, even the wells of salvation. God is on a mission in this end time to restore the preaching of the gospel. There was a noble dream that Jesus had for which he co-opted the disciples to partner with him to bring liberation to humankind. And that noble dream was a dream of the kingdom of God that was already settled in the heavens coming to find expression and colonizing the earth. And as long as until the waters cover the sea, until the knowledge of the glory of the Lord covers the earth, as the waters cover the, the sea, all kingdom men will not stop striving. May the Lord strengthen you in the name of Jesus Christ. So demons are persons without bodies. Um, and they have a few objectives. The first objective of a demon is to keep you from making Jesus Christ your savior. It's to keep you from making Jesus Christ your savior. And that's why when we go for crusade outings, thank God for Festival of Glory, we're still going to be on the field this year. But this time is going to be a blast. Because we are going to begin many crusades in the city. Little crusades before the um, Festival of Glory crusade. And we are hoping to have strong retainership of the converts that will come. We are going to train all of us to become foot soldiers. You will have several people that you will have to disciple. And there will be a wide pool of people that will need people to minister to them. And to cast out demons from them. So you, you will have a spaceman to work with. That's what I mean. We will all be doing the practicals together. My job is to bring the education to us. And then to show you examples of how it is done. And then we are going to carry it over. And we are running Makodi down with the gospel of salvation. Hallelujah. I read something from the internet yesterday. It was a preacher that said it. Many preachers that have been evangelists. They, they spoke their convictions. Hallelujah. And, and one of the preachers said, If in our Bible schools men are shown the pulpit as a platform for ministry, and they are not shown the soul as a platform for ministry, they will be looking for ministry for pulpits and not for souls. When I digested that one, it shook me to my spine. Then the other one now came. And say the gospel is only good news if it comes on time. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> what if, there are some med- some infirmities that when they come upon the man and you take the person to the hospital, they, they, the doctor will say, Kai, you came late. <laughs> so the good news of the fact that there's treatment available doesn't apply to that man because he came late. We will not be late with the gospel. Oh, we will not be late. We will not be late. Each and every one of us, that's my preoccupation this year, will be trained to be proficient functionaries of the kingdom. Very skillful in administering the wonders of salvation. And we trust God. The the number here is enough to to tranquilize our city. I trust God for for grace on individual levels. And on corporate levels. The first assignment of a demon is to ensure that men are kept away from Jesus Christ, the Savior. And demons do it through various means. They do it through mind bending. They do it through empty philosophy. I was listening to a scientist and he was sitting on the dock. It was like a litigation platform. 
a Christian scientist was on the other side of the dock, and on, on this side of the dock, an atheist scientist. And then the atheist scientist now said, okay, 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 where, do, where, where, where does God come from? Is there evidence to prove that the supernatural can impact upon the natural? Is there evidence for that? We will need evidence too. And he was saying what he was saying, thinking that he was, he was smart. I saw the folly that has bedeviled him. Listen to me. Can I have your notebook? This notebook? Let's start this way. Can this design, this is a well designed um, notepad, as you can see. Is it possible for this design just to come without a designer? Mm -hmm. So any man trying to make a case for godlessness has been beguiled. And the devil is a mind bender. And so you could see someone that has a PhD degree couldn't sit down to check that, oh, everything about this frame of reference points to a designer. In fact, we just discovered in medical science recently that every organ of yours has a clock. Every organ has a timer. Are you with me? And then the biggest clock is in your brain. And they did so many experiments, and one of the experiments they did was that they could actually make your brain think that it is night by drawing the curtain. And because you have that feeling, it will adjust the clock, and then it will cause sleep. They did that in one of the planes I flew. If you fly more than 10 hours, they will do that to you. And then you will think it is night because the shutters are down. Meanwhile, when you raise the shutters, it's, it's broad daylight. You are traveling from past, from future to past. So there is no sun. Are you with me? Oh my God. Salvation. Salvation is our gift. Now that we are saved, the message of salvation is our gift to this dying world. I will not stop at anything but deliver the message of salvation to the people in our city and people that are under the sound of our voice. The second thing that demons do is that they want to keep you from serving Jesus effectively. Just in case you have passed the first test and you are now born again. Demons will ensure that you are kept from serving God effectively. And so once and again we will need to put our lives on the scale to find out how effective we are in kingdom service. If you happen not to be as effective as you can be, it means that you, have, you are a victim of the influence of an intelligent fellow. Demons intend to keep us from serving God. Now, I have scriptures for what I just said, and then I'll bring the next point. Acts chapter 13, verse 6 to 8, we are going to see someone attempting to divert the heart of someone that was interested in listening to the content of the message of the gospel. Are you there with me in the book of Acts chapter 6? We read this scripture yesterday, but I still want us to read it today. Hallelujah. Now the, what, what are they called? You don't have scripture on display anymore. Oh my. Acts chapter 6. Acts chapter 13, verse 6. And what you have there is Acts 6, 13. And when they had gone through the aisle unto Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew whose name was Bar Jesus which was with the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. It was this guy, out of his own free will, that wanted to hear the word of God. And he knew that the people that uh, were establishing the doctrine of the kingdom from place to place happened to be Paul and Barnabas. So he reached out to them. It was him that was making the effort to get to the ministers of the gospel to come unveil the content of the gospel to him. And then suddenly, next verse, an Elimas, the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, 
We stood them seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. The demons that were walking to Elimas. I went to preach in Ebe Uzariah. And it happened to be that when I went there, the meeting that was organized was not organized like a preaching thing. It was organized like, you know, something social, something, you know, you just come and chill out, you know. So it was an undercover meeting. So at the, end, at the height of the excitement, I came with the Bible. <laughs> that was not an appealing sight at all. But in order to clear their doubts, I came with the word of the Lord in my spirit, burning like fire. And as I gave expression to the word in my spirit, ah, it, was, it was not excited, excitement anymore. It was like a spiritual magnet. The same people that were not comfortable with the fact that I was coming into a social meeting with the Bible. When the message began to come out. The message sounded quite interesting. It was the Holy Spirit that made it so. Hallelujah. Amen. Then I remember I remember there was a lady in front that was sitting in front here and she was struggling and I could see in her eyes great hatred as I preached the gospel the, the, the sense of hatred that was upon her eyes I could not deny it. It was not something I could push aside. Hallelujah. And I was asking God in my heart, what will I do to this lady? As I preach the gospel, as I preach the gospel. Then she will follow me with her eyes. It's possible for you to, not to look at the preacher. If you must look at him as if you want to kill him. <laughs> but she could not handle herself. Hallelujah. And then I sneaked where she was and released some power because it was a distraction and she came under the influence of demons and then she began to speak that she will kill me i'll kill you i'll kill you so all along what she had in her heart was to kill the preacher you see it was a demon that was at work in her life not wanting her to hear the gospel Later on, she was delivered. Yes, she was delivered that day. And I insisted that we will administer some counseling. Because I wanted to understand what was happening behind the scene. And then she told me that the spirit inside of her, she knew she had the spirit. That that spirit told her that this man, you should be afraid of this man. You should be afraid of him. You should, be, you should be afraid of him. He's not here for good reasons. He's here for terrible reasons. He's, he wants to do something that you will not recover from can you leave this place? Can you leave this? So that was why she was... But you see, she was magnetic to her seat by a power she cannot explain. Uh, you see, the person I'm talking about, you people know the person. So that's why we withdraw the name. And that was a person's story of salvation. The demons were casted out. And that lady was filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes you need to get the story from behind the scene. The things that happened before God showed up. Then you find out how much of attempts were made from the kingdom of darkness to distract people from the gospel. You find out how much attempts have been made on your own life now to distract you from serving God. And so I know that the reason why I'm here is to serve God. It was God that sent Moses to the land of Egypt and the message was simple. Let my people go that what? That they may serve me. If you see, if you see, first of all, Pharaoh did not want them to leave Egypt. Then the time came, Pharaoh was now willing to let a section go. If you see his reluctance, you will begin to understand the ideology of demons. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Demons will not want you to serve God. So as you are sitting now, begin to write out all the excuses you've had for which you've not prayed the way you want to pray. Okay, I work in the bank. I just married last week. And I'm on honeymoon. I'm writing my project. Trying to make sure I put myself together. I work in the oil industry. Most times I work offshore. I'm a rig worker. Mm. Can we get the list? Well, I need a list of... All the items. And that's why the Bible says that there is a cloud of witnesses. 
those excuses that you are given, God is going to produce men that were in that same circumstance that did not fall. Oh, the judgment is going to be a very colorful sight. Because the Bible says there is a grandstand. People that ran on your track, having the same burdens that you carry today. But those people were able to run to finish. They were sprinters in the running journey. And you, because of the same burdens, you say, oh my God. If only I were married, it would have lubricated the possibilities. If only I was, uh, I got that job or something. And all of those excuses that you claim are cogent, valid excuses, are excuses that have been given to you by demons. Demons are very cerebral people, cerebral entities. And when a demon begins to speak into your head, it will look as if the demon understands you so much. He knew the way you grew up, knew the aunties that molested you, knew the ones that used to slap you. It, 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 the utterances are so familiar because it's a familiar spirit that was in the scenario of the things that happened to your grandfather, things that happened to your father, and now he's speaking into your head. It's as if he knows your history. He, he speaks for you. He's speaking your mind. And all in a bid to bring you to a point where there is a deficiency in your service to God. Third thing that demons will do is to ensure that you do not know the Holy Ghost. As long as you do not know the Holy Ghost, you will not be able to realize the power that God has released in the actualization of your destiny. Satan likes Christians whose fires burn low. You see, the fly is a very fragile creature. And the fly can perch on a stove, even though the stove has potential to carry fire. Uh, it, the fly likes the stove when it is fireless. But you see, flies don't perch on hot stoves. Also, the devil knows he can perch on your life if you know the way of fire. So the devil will do everything to ensure you never know the Holy Ghost. Life in the Spirit is blessed living. And that's why our fathers of old, when they were teaching us how to share the grace, they said the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God. And it was our fathers that added the sweet fellowship of the Holy Ghost. It was not, I actually thought that thing was in the Bible like that, the sweet fellowship. We didn't know that it was the mighty fathers that we had in the faith. Having explored the possibilities in the spirit, we're able to come to a conclusion that it was a sweet sentence that God gave us by releasing the Holy Spirit. They could come up with sweet because they knew it experientially. But for many of us, it's a body. It's a body. It's a body. We have not yet understood what our great fathers uh, explored, for which they call uh, the communion in the Spirit a sweet experience. I pray God. I pray God with all my heart. That we all will know the way of the Spirit. Amen. For the preacher says in the book of Ecclesiastes. He said, just like you do not know. How bones are formed in the womb of a woman that is with child. So know it not thou. The way of the Spirit. The way the Spirit actualizes things. The way the Spirit performs things. The way the Spirit brings prayers to pass. The way the Spirit empowers you in order for you to be adequately reinforced for, for actualizations and possibilities. He said, we don't know it mentally. You will need to learn afresh when you come to the school of the Spirit. He will make you unlearn many things you have learned. He will disappoint several confidences that you have sustained until you come to a point where you are willing to yield. To him, then a new education begins. The devils and demons will never want you to gain mastery in the knowledge of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Glory to God. When demons operate, there are nine levels of demonic oppression. I don't know how far we can go with our study. You know, I started this study since 2012. I've been studying about demons in the Bible. Every scripture where demons or 
spirits or evil spirits were mentioned. I had to ransack it from back and forth in order to understand everything that the Bible reveals about demons. There are nine levels of demonic attack. Nine levels of demonic attack. The first level is the attack on the emotions. Attack on the what? Emotions. Attack on what? Emotions. Let me read out the symptoms of emotional attacks. Emotional attack. That's the first layer of demonic attacks. It's emotional is attacks of demons on emotions that produce what we call rejection. There's a feeling called a feeling of rejection. I know we are men of faith, we are women of faith, and no one will ever accept that they have ever felt rejected before. But there's something called rejection. And it's an emotion, an emotion that is inspired by demons. Another attack on your emotion is what we call depression. I never even knew that there were drugs for depression. Ah, doctor, where is, who is the doctor here? I found out not too long ago, just a few years back, that there were drugs. Actually, there were drugs for depression. Jesus. Now, I have the permanent cure for the, the impression. Permanent cure. Don't run to the doctor every time. Sometimes check with us. Check with us, okay? Let us... Some of these things are demonic. You can't use a, a white tablet to, <laughs> to handle these matters. Hallelujah. It was right here in this hall. Right here on this podium. They brought a madman here. And it was on Christmas Day. Hallelujah. And the guy has not slept for 14 days. It was here they brought him. And while I was going to meet with them, because in order for them to bring him here, I went to the hospital where he was and I said, discharge him. It took them four hours to decide on discharging him. Because the elders that came from the village said, this boy that said we should discharge our son, he doesn't even have beard, on his chin. <laughs> that, that's what being one of the elders. I was beardless. <laughs> he, he, he lacked beard. <laughs> Hallelujah. So there was a great rift and a great fight. And then I don't know how they did it. But by 4 p.m. they had succeeded in discharging the young man. You see, you will not tell somebody to discharge somebody if God has not spoken to you. The Lord had said, I'm interested in the case. I want to do something about the case. So I was bold and I said, okay. Because when I went to pray for him in the world, many other people began to manifest. And the nurses did not cast the devils out. It was me they cast out of the world. <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I was cast out. From With a notice never to return. <laughs> So my options were not many. I said, okay, we're going to continue this ministration. Uh, do something about him. The only variable in the question now, discharge him. I saw that the psychiatric doctors were trained to, to accommodate demons in their space. And whenever they came early in the morning, they came with their files and they called demonic manifestations pathology. That's his, uh, that's his, that course is a lie. I can't read that such a course. Meanwhile, the doctor can't treat any psychiatric situation. All they do is to give the person a heavy dose of heavy drugs and the person goes to sleep. That's the best they can do. They manage the situation. They don't treat it. We treat. We treat. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> you know the Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 8 verse, verse 16 and 17 when the evening time was come, they brought unto him many that were sick and possessed of devils and he cast out the spirits by his word and healed all that were sick that it might be fulfilled that which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet himself and what? 
That's pure. We're pure. We're cured by Jesus. Hallelujah. So when they were able to finish their civil war, they brought the young man to this pulpit. Now I now ask the Lord, Lord, how are we going to do this today? And I felt the angel of the Lord. He touched me on my right hand. So I knew that he had already, already sent his angel ahead of me. So when I, the young man was here, I now stretched my hand and laid it and put it on his head. And I spoke in tongues for 13 minutes. And he slept in my hands. So we put it. That's the guy that said he had not slept for 14 days. He was smelling urine. We put him here. Then I went back to take my car out. The, the old man that said I was beardless. Now say, he don't finish. <laughs> I said, no. It's not, it's not done yet. He's going to wake up and he's going to demand for food. So the thing to do, because he has not eaten for 14 days, so his, his appetite is going to be, he's going to, he's going to have carnivorous appetite. So they went and bought glucosate and then they bought uh, eba. In fact, you don't make rice available. It's not needed. What you need is, that's why people that are listening to me from Spain, you, there's something called eba. And if you have not tasted of that delicacy, <laughs> you're on the wrong side of heaven. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So the young man woke up. The first thing he noticed was that his garment was smelling urine. He said, How did it get here? And all of that. Everybody kept quiet, including the old man that said I had no beer. <laughs> and just like I said, he asked for food. So the old man now said, How come the young, that my young son, because now when you do something that is positive. <laughs> How did he know that this is the question he asked? And then they gave him Eba. And then look who said he drank. And then when he finished eating, he was sleeping. That sleep was for four hours. Then he woke up 11 in the night. I had instructed the pastors that were here on how to take him. He, he did his first night vigil in this hall. Yes. And then the family wanted to take him home. I said, No, he's not yet discharged because I came back as a doctor for what round in the morning. <laughs> said, No, he's not. Then I told him, I said, Young man, the demons will come again. So we need to equip you on what to do when they return. Because when an unclean spirit is casted out, it normally checks its former accommodation. Their accommodations are, they are in short supply. So they check the previous one to see if it's still intact so that they can come with more terrible situations. So we had to hold him up here. We ministered to him and we baptized him. Holy Spirit began to speak in tongues. And we taught him how to pray in tongues for four hours, for five hours. And then the last night, which was the night of passing out, we had to we kept him at the back and then watch him pray in tongues till the break of day. When he survived that test, we said, all right, go back to Union Greek. He went back to Union Greek. He was in 400 level. He picked up his education. Continued. 500 level. He graduated as an engineer. And this is a true life story. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you still with me? Yes. Now, so the first layer of demonic attack is on the emotions. And that's what produces rejection, the feeling of rejection, the feeling of depression. One day I came to church and I met a lady. She finished, everybody had gone and she was still in her seat. I went to see the pastor, greeted the pastor, came out and noticed that this young lady was sitting in her seat and then I went up. What is the problem? Then she had many tales to tell. And the bottom line was that she was so depressed and she came to church that day that if God doesn't show up, she will leave the church and go and kill herself because there is no God. Oh, you don't know. You think preaching the gospel is just putting John 3, 6, Isaiah chapter 45. You don't know that men have practical problems. They have real problems, real challenges. And real demons have bedeviled them. In fact, the first thing the lady said, I, I know you. We, we went to BSU together. We were on the same campus but together. You have been preaching this gospel for a long time. I have come to the conclusion that that thing you preach is a lie. 
Hallelujah. Uh, you see, the demon that is speaking here now, speaking through her vocal cord, giving her the thoughts, the intelligence that she's communicating, is no longer a spirit of depression, but it's a spirit of deception. So she's not only depressed, she's also deceived. If you are patient as a counselor, you'll be able to count the number of spirits that are transmitting through a particular individual. But most times we are not uh, patient. We are not patient enough. You will see the transmission. Demons can't hide their identity. The host that they possess becomes the platform from whence they operate. If you know where to look, you will know how many things, entities you are dealing with. And in the deliverance of such a person, just know they are going to have, if there are things that you have identified, in the there will be three violent reactions. Yes, it is mathematical, it's scientific. If you have been able to test if you, and you discover, and there are several questions you can ask, you can ask that will make demons react. Are you with me? They will begin to talk. And then when they begin to talk, you will know by the transmission, you will know what is at work here, what is at work there. And then before we go into the art of casting out devils, because Jesus said, one of the primary identities by which we can know them that believe in the Lord, that we do what? They will cast out demons. I need to tell you something that demons are not only, only in people, they are also in places. Some demons are in the river in your village. That's their abode. Some demons are in the forest in your village. And the demons that operate from the forest, if you have seen them before, they are not like the ones that operate from the, from the river. There are some demons also that operate from the mountain top. Now, we will go into those details so that... And all of these demons that operate from different places... Oh, somebody says in this scripture, for this my team, I'm saying that some demons are in the waters. Okay. Jesus, help me, help me, help me, help me. All right. You know, I told you I started studying this from... When? 2012. Okay. Let us start with this. I'll come back to the lecture. Don't worry. Um, Revelation chapter 12 verse 7. But that's not my real scripture. This is just a bypass scripture. I hope to find my scripture before this study comes to an end. Uh, that scripture is needed in the lecture territorial spirits and it's not in this diary it's at home that's why it's difficult for me to find but let's just start from here there was war in heaven michael and his angels against the dragon and the dragon fought against his angels go on and prevailed not neither was their place found anymore in heaven and the great dragon was cast out the old serpent called the devil now what is the difference between dragon, serpent, devil? There are three different metaphors. When we talk about territorial space, that's when we come to what is revealed by the metaphors that are used in describing Satan, our enemy. Uh, Satan, which deceived the whole world, he was cast into the earth. So the place where he came, when he was cast out of heaven. Where was it? In the end. This is the preliminary scripture. The second scripture uh, reveals how that when he was cast, some fell into the sea. Some others fell into the land. And that's why some demons have their abode in the sea. They are aquatic. They are marine. The marine kind of spirits have an identity. And I don't want to press further until we talk about territorial spirits. Maybe from there you'll be able to understand your family. And everything I see on this uh, subject is from a researched opinion. I'm not using terminologies that are not backed up with scripture. Except you don't want us to go deeper, you know. Then we can, we can stay on the surface. But this subject is large. And I'm trusting God that we'll be able to do it very deeply in the name of Jesus not uh, because I want to show that I have revelation but it's a needed study line study emphasis that is in the spirit to ensure that every believer becomes competent enough to be able to handle the spiritual concerns in his ecosystem if you are still with me say 
Amen. Amen. And those of you listening from other nations, um, and you are saying, oh, this is black gospel because there are no demons in London. I want to assure you that there are more demons in London than in my village. I heard that the school of witchcraft, that witchcraft is a course now in the university, that the first graduates will be graduating this year for, from witchcraft. <laughs> Hey, well, um, that's not done in my village It's done in one of your cities So, what we are saying is that your city is a very spiritual location And you need to take charge Of where you are domiciled If not, the place will take charge of you In Jesus' name So we have demons attacking emotions In form of rejection In form of depression And in form of Resentment, rejection, depression, resentment. Just watch out as a counselor, as a discipler. Watch out for the voice of depression. Watch out for the voice of rejection. Watch out for the voice of resentment. When the person is tired of life, just watch out. No human being will ever be in that state if demons do not aid him. A man in the spirit is a self-motivated man. Is a self-engineered man. He is self-mobilized. Because the Holy Spirit will mobilize you. The Holy, the Holy Ghost will motivate you. When, when it became popular for believers to be feeding on motivational messages, I knew that we were all victims of demonic activities. When a believer needs to be motivated, you wake up in the morning and there is no energy to drive the day. You are slacking. You are laid back. You are conquered in your soul. Ah, demons have walked over time on your life. People that came to my dad's barrier to comfort me went back home comforted. They needed more comfort than me that they came to comfort. Because the Holy Ghost inside, he glowed. And some scriptures came. I, I released those scriptures to them and they were encouraged. Depressed people came to comfort me when my father... <laughs> Oh my God. Please help me preach to your neighbor. Know the Holy Ghost. Know the Holy Ghost. The elder said, okay, after two weeks then, it will down on me that my dad had died. It's how many years now? It has not down. <laughs> Hallelujah. And before my time is up upon the face of the earth, five years to the time, I'll tell you, I'm on my way to Zion. I will, yes, I tell you. Five years to the time, I will come and make a proclamation. I know how old I will be then. Boko Haram, bomb, blight, assassination, accident, plane crash. There is not my portion. That's not how I will leave the face of this, this stage. I will live gallantly. Yes, I will, I will sleep. That's how I will go. And I will make sure that I have pounded yam before <laughs> I take my flight. It is appointed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Now, okay, let me stop there for now. <laughs> so, an attack on the emotions. The sec second platform for attack is the mind. When you find someone that is overtaken by unbelief, is a victim of demonic activity. And, and just like it's easy for you to believe that God can heal, God can save, God can deliver. It is because the spirit of faith is in you. When the spirit of faith begins to operate in you, you begin to say the things that God says. But you, it, we, we, we do not all have faith. Right? When you find someone caught up in unbelief, demons put him in that state. Because demons know that as long as he's in unbelief, he cannot enter into the resources that are in the spirit. Because God has a desire. And the desire that he has is that we will believe him. So most of the things that are in God cannot be accessed by people that cannot exercise their spirit in faith. And so there is a demon of unbelief that ensures that you don't fly beyond your stature. You never know how, fly, how far, far you can fly until you exercise your faith. Then you will discover it is possible to mount up with wings like eagles. 
when you find unbelief is a, is a symptom of demonic pressure when you find someone that is confused confusion 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 in fact this experience is the experience of confusion is not supposed to be an experience that a believer should have if that believer is in sync with the holy ghost confusion should be far from your borders far from your borders far from you and just in case you are you are a creature of confusion confusion is your uh, status quo modus operandi it means you've been operating out of the regions of grace what you call your life is a creation of demons confusion no hallelujah hallelujah the bible says that god has not given us a spirit of fear just in case you find yourself afraid, it's not from God. That's what he's saying. He has given us the spirit of love. The ability to love people that hate you. It's just flowing from your bowels. It is spirit energized. You don't want to love the person, but you love the person. He has given us that kind of a spirit. The spirit of love. The spirit, what? Of power. And of a sound man. That's what he gave us. So when you begin to see the spirit of fear is not from God. It's from somewhere else. And many people pet their depression. They pet their confusion. When you want to begin to address the confusion and say, Come on! Drop that confusion. They, they pet it. They feel as if you are fighting them. That one is deceived. That, to like confusion. Yeah. Are you with me? I was talking to somebody. The person was speaking to me on the phone. And the person, oh my God, if I say the details and the person hears this message, the person will know I'm talking about it. Oh, hallelujah. But I'm a preacher of the gospel, you know. <laughs> Amen. I'm not trying to be nice. I'm, I'm a preacher. This person huh, woke up one morning because of pressure, went and turned in his resignation later. And then traveled away from the city. And then sent a letter to the principal of his department. And stated why he left. And implicated one of the staff there. So everybody was calling him to come back. Then he now called me and said, I just turned in my resignation. I said, and when I prayed about it, you know what the scripture that came to me? That scripture in the book of Matthew. Where the angel appeared to Joseph and told him, go back to the land of Israel. For the people that sought the child's life are no more. And I said, this be the word of God unto you. And when I confronted the person with the word of God, you know what the person said? There's so much embarrassment in that place. So I cannot go there. You know what? You know what? This person has exalted self more than obedience. The Bible says that the, the way of what? Of a transgressor is hard. For the rebellious will dwell in a dry land. When you have had a direct instruction from God and you believe you can survive with the luxury of disobedience. Aye! The rebellious they shall dwell in what? In a time. There are many times people that offended me. God said, go and apologize to them. Many times. You have to die to self to walk with God. If the Holy Ghost is not king in your life, He will never show you deep things. So that person now is on a journey of the exploration of hardship. Because he has fallen out of alignment with God. And he was calling to explain his own condition. Maybe it will make sense to me. I said, no, I've been in this school before. If he's your king, go back there. Then he told me the many reasons why I cannot go. I just say, oh, to God be the glory. You know, the preacher's job is not to change people. Though. It's the Holy Ghost that is the agent of transformation. Mm, so we preach the truth. And in order for you to be a preacher of truth and verity, you, you, you don't consider the persons of men. Let the Bible be the standard. Me, myself, I'm not above it, so I can tell you the truth. And it came to pass. 
that his brother declined. And I know that for the next seven years, you will hear stories from that quarter. And because I know that it is in rebellion that the person took that part, even though I'm a generous man, my one kobo will not be in the process of helping what? A rebellious man. So, eh? thy seed in the morning, the Bible says, and in the night, do not let thy hand be idle. That scripture does not direct you to help a man that God is not helping. Unbelief, confusion, insanity, and finally, we have evil thought. Evil thoughts are evidences of attacks on your mind. Evil thought. Have you ever thought? Okay, can we be plain? Can we be plain today? We can change tomorrow, but today, I say, let's be, <laughs> let's be plain today, okay? Have you ever thought one day that the best thing to do to a particular person is to kill the person? Me, I have thought like that. Me, I have thought so. <laughs> I'm also guilty of this. He's a demon. <laughs> Vengeance is of the law. No matter how much we can, we can pray and say, Lord, we commit this matter to you. Hallelujah. But we are not supposed to give legs to such. Those, that, that transmission is not from God. No matter how much evil was done. Hallelujah. Allow God. God is the department of vengeance. Your department of vengeance is the Lord. And when God begins to judge, eh? He will do ten times more than you have ever hoped to do in the days of your rot. Because when he rises, it is you, still you, that will beg him. This one is too much. But you don't have the key to stop that vengeance. It's a protocol that will be administered by the hand of God. I have seen God strike men that boasted. They boasted for a long time. And the reason why they were boasting was because God gave them time to repent. So they used those time to boast. And when everybody had forgotten and accepted their lot and portion, by the wickedness that came from his hand, then Jehovah Sabaoth, he rose in the day of battle. Jehovah Sabaoth, he will rise on your behalf. Yeah. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. Yeah. Hallelujah. Live up to God. They are thoughts. That devil, devils can fire into your head. Hallelujah. I'm talking about territorial matters. Thou didst divide the sea by thy strength. Thou breakest the head of the dragons. Where are they? In the water. So there are some demons. They are place of oppression. The oppressing system is the aquatic world. We will go deeply into that study as we try to chat our calls uh, during the course of this teaching. But I trust that God will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. A true carrier of the cross doesn't have an agenda. His only agenda is to preach the kingdom. And by so doing, you will meet persecution. You will meet tribulation. But you see, we have counted the cost before we started the journey. Because the Bible says that he that put his hands to the plow and look at back is not feed for the kingdom. That's how glory comes. Glory comes through pressure. It comes through sacrifice. It comes through consistency. It comes through suffering. Then glory breaks out. Something of heaven that earth cannot handle. And it begins to create a pathway, an avalanche, a secretary. The civilization of the glory of God begins to be established upon the face of the earth. I believe that will be such men, such priceless men, that will bring God's glory down in our time. Three demons can also operate from the tongue. Lying spirits. Spirits that make you competent in the area of criticisms, backbitings, blasphemy, unclean spirits, unclean speech, and negative talking, negative talking. Those are demons operating, taking advantage of the platform of the tongue. 
Uh, Pastor Tony, when are we going to continue this teaching? Because I have to stop now. Do you? Okay, maybe when next I show up. Remind me, we'll continue with demons. We'll do it to a logical conclusion. Before I now teach us how to cast out devils. Not just how to cast them from people, but to cast them from places. And you'll go back to your village. You go back to that place where they say they kept the first shrine. The first shrine that was imported from Cameroon to your village. And then you carry out a spiritual ceremony. Hallelujah. A spiritual ceremony is an activity that makes things go on record in the realm of the spirit. We have been called into priesthood. That is our preoccupation. We provide earthly permission for heavenly interference. So that the hand of God can be strong in every place and every space wherein we find ourselves. It's a call. It's a kingdom call. It's a call to enthrone Jesus and to dethrone every entity that seeks to take his place in the lives of men or in the land wherein we dwell. And so God is conscripting us as functionaries, as soldiers, as men that will lift his banner. Men that will put the staff of his authority in places where we find ourselves and there is no there is no being saying that the purpose of God had a hand in the family from whence you came and if it, it, be, it be, if it be true then there is an assignment from heaven that is bequeathed for you to prosecute in that same space we are going to pray this evening and the prayer is simple hallelujah now the reason why we are identifying those platforms where demons can operate is that when it operates in your life shut it down when somebody does something wickedly to you and then there's a thought of vengeance so strong shut it down do you know something what I want to tell you is that your speaking has more authority than your thinking sister come do what I say you should do come let them see you. Be on the camera. Be on the spotlight. Begin to count. Anything I say you should do, do it. Okay, count in your mind from 1 to 10. No, don't count to me. Count in your mind. What's your name? Where did you stop? 2. She stopped at number 2. Because when she wanted to talk, she stopped thinking. It means that your utterance is superior to your thought. So if you want to stop hating somebody And the hatred is coming from within Just keep saying I love you I love you I love you I love you And that demon will shut up We had to fight those battles In order for our fountain to be pure fountains That will water nations And water parched lands And dry lands If you are going to be a minister That is going to be a blessing to your generation So that the life of God Will issue forth from your utterance Then you must learn how to master every form of evil seeking to find a place in your soul all oh, is great power for you to be able to forgive great power as we go into battle tonight because tonight is a night of battles oh the battles of the lord god will chronicle tonight in one of the books in heaven for the things that will take place in the spirit on the basis of our prayers tonight as we go into battle, you will do one thing. Forgive everybody. Right now, right now. Everybody that offended you. The one that looked upon you and despised you. The one that tried to bring shame upon you. Can you just forgive them? Say it. Say I forgive this person. I forgive that person. And let this person go. Can you, can you, can you, can you forgive? Can you forgive? Just forgive tonight. Just forgive, just forgive tonight. Allow that heavy burden to be rolled off your shoulders. Forgive tonight. Forgive tonight. Let them go, let them go. Let them go, let them go. Let them go. We forgive. Is it not written? Forgive men their trespasses. 
forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. Glory to God. If you have forgiven, then you can stand on your feet. Oh Lord, have all seen Halabaria. Skiforombo soko masiko pre kibasko prisko fatama asai kombarakus kete preso si lemina kulia a preso se kapata mukos kaminata rai kompane mosaka tali prisko feta mundo kopri alama monima is kateli. The Bible says God has not given unto us the spirit of fear but he has given us the spirit of love of power and of a sound mind tonight I want to lead you to cast out every fear in your life the major limiting factor around humankind is called fear as long as you fear your eyes have not seen your heritage in God can you cast away every fear before we begin to fight? Cast away every fear. You are not an accident. You are not a, a product of the a production line. You didn't come by mass production. God had you in mind. Because you will rise from this place and the hand of God upon you will be strong.
is that night. And we come before the Lord that He may stretch forth His hands. Indeed, tonight His hands will be stretched forth. He came to me ne kile ere salita. Jeni kumbres guvateli ko paswalata me. Now you are going to pray for yourself. Have you noticed symptoms of delay? Resistance? Any aspect of your life that have been kept checked under lock and key? You have authority in your mouth. Break that chain. Break it now. Address it now. Address it now. Address it now. For those of us that have children, watch over your children with prayer right now. Hebo seli kombeni atika pesoma. Alabo semena bresko vesamena kato. Rabos de si kopete makunda. Bresko vetama. Alendo komba semena kato. Jeba kori asika bresta velato. Lia kento maseli. Ramina Kusa, he can get a mina Kadia. Allah, Mamma, 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 Subria, Capeta, Mino Covele. Alleli alert of Compesa Mina Kadia. Shut down that oppression of the devil. Shut it down! Shut it down! Shut it down in the name of Jesus! He lost sight of Kelemon Doria Sika Metabella. Amoselia kibaran tomena. Alamoseke teli kompose. Mila mama yiko talima. Preso fela mantali. Kabri ko pasamata. Isa selie ta kompali. Mama yiko pasile. Ebresco bela natale makadele, remina konte makande babori. Mama i kabra asa mena kusa. Ye na na mo kotele, ye kale mama le. Isai kumbele kamina kumali. Yes, ala kumbela mina. Mina mene peza yiko nali. Amen alobre sai rama. Yika mai kumbala mana ye. Yake ndala bo. Amina <laughs> The power of the Lord comes upon your 
life. Come support your family. the prayers we pray today. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 26. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 26. You can put it on the screen. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 26 on the screen. That they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. Who are taken captive by him at his will. That means Satan didn't consult with you. Yes. He decided to take you captive in the area that you have seen no advancement. But the scripture is saying that they might what? Recover themselves. Today you want to recover yourself. That they might recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. 
Recover yourself. Oh my God. Recover yourself now. Recover yourself now. Recover yourself now. Recover yourself now. Recover yourself right now. That they might recover themselves.